9,250 pounds. Now, this is meant to get you a year of top quality education, access to top quality in-person teaching, office hours, support, access to libraries, books, computer programs, facilities, events, sports, a social life, and a lot, lot more. However, this year, what 9,250 pounds gets you is a online education, some awkward Zoom meetings, and a crashing portal whenever you try and upload your assignment. Oh, and a uni house you can't even live in. However, in all fairness, this is nobody's fault. No blame is being assigned, but that is the reality. During my time as a student, I've made three videos about a tuition fee refund. The first was way back when I was in first year, my fresher self was talking about, you know, how there should be a refund for students because they're missing out on teaching time because of the strikes. And I learned about some history students at some universities that missed out on six of nine months of teaching because of the strikes. Yet, they still had to pay the full amount. And this is definitely a topic that the government seemed to be very stubborn about. You know, I think there was a petition about, you know, getting refunds, it got raised in the commons, and like that, it was just kind of over. Other than the Twitter uproar, you rarely hear about tuition fees for the last 10 years. Now, before we jump into this video, I'll just give you some quick background. I studied economics and finance at the University of York, and in my third and final year, coronavirus came around, and as a result, I got a safety net. All my exams became open book online 24 hours. All of my teaching had finished in April, so technically I didn't miss out on too much teaching. The, the exam and revision process was very stressful. All the facilities were closed and I had to move home because of lockdown by April and you know obviously when you're at home it's a lot harder to revise and when you're kind of going through what everyone was going through back in April last year uh, May it was a lot harder to stay motivated to have good mental health and to kind of to kind of want to work for your exams then this year I started my masters this time in professional acting and I'm currently doing that now obviously I took a risk at starting a masters during the COVID sort of era I just wanted to get it done um, subsequently I've had like one day of online teaching four days of in-class in-building teaching and obviously we have to social distance there's no singing there's certain activities that we can't do because of COVID so even so right now my masters has definitely been affected by corona it's been delayed by another month and overall my uni experience has definitely been affected by COVID probably not as bad during my masters as the actual uh, university BA students etc etc so now you know about me we're going to jump into this whole controversial topic now drop a like subscribe if you're new around here let me know in the comments what you guys think as well I'll probably leave some link to a petition down below if you want to sign it as well not that they have done much historically but uh, it feels like you're doing something if you sign it so and another thing I don't really keep up with the news too much because I find it quite depressing so so yeah my facts might not be 100% accurate firstly tuition fees in the UK are £9,250 if you're a Russell Group 9k if not and um, this is this is fairly expensive nowhere near as bad as let's say the US or places like that and they were raised from like 3k back in 2011 and the money raised from that tuition fee increase was apparently integral to rebuilding our economy post the financial crash and I learned that last year in third year from my economics history teacher and um, since then I've had a bit more sympathy and understanding to why tuition fees are £9,250 but I'm not sympathetic of that price when you're not really getting what you you signed up for so what I did was I, I, I put on my um, student vlogs Instagram basically a poll saying should university students get a refund and 90% of people said yes 10% said no and this is on basis of like over hundreds of votes. And then, I, and then I followed it up by asking people why. I'm gonna read out a few of the responses here. So this is a few arguments for why we should be given refunds. Seb says, in any other situation, if you don't get what you paid for, you're entitled to a refund, simple. It's very true. I was playing COD yesterday uh, with Jacob and Bailey and this kind of inspired this video and David. And um, mate said, if you went to the cinema, you bought a ticket, you went into the theater, and then the movie screen wasn't working, but what they did, they sent you home to watch it. There's no way they would be able to charge you the same price. Once again, a very good an analogy. And also my other mate said that basically, lecturers always say from like first, second, third year before COVID, like, yeah, you've got to come to the lecture. Being in person, watching it in person is so much more valuable, it's so much better for your learning. I can convey myself properly then. If you have any questions, you can ask me all this stuff. And um, all of a sudden now they're like, online learning's just as good. It's another valid point of how, you know, it's not the lecturer's fault, but it's another sort of U-turn where they're like, it's fine to do online when previously they're like, you can't learn from lecture recordings only, that's not good. Now they're expecting that and they're expecting people to do just as well from it. Um, a few others, definitely not getting the full experience, so we should get a refund. Um, fees go to more than just tuition, maintenance, research, so definitely partial refund at least. It's a good point. 
you don't have to clean the buildings, at least refund the cleaners fee. There's got to be some sort of token thing, surely. Max says in part, probably, you should, especially if you've been living in halls and haven't been living there. Uh, and then we've got a Ron here from Jacob who says, shouldn't get a full refund, we should get a reduction. We're getting the open university. Facilities we can't use or stuff like that. Um, and people haven't been able to live in their houses and they're all very valid points and there's there's obviously going to be several counter arguments but there's no denying that the cleaner fees are going to reduce by maybe £1,000 at university maybe spread that out to everybody who's a student at that university just as a token gesture or because that is fair if you they must spend so much money on cleaning now they don't have to clean it even if it was a penny, just that petty penny would be good. So I was in the edit and I got another late response to my poll and it was quite a good one. So it said, um, we paid for a service we didn't receive. Gyms give us a full refund because they can't provide the facilities we paid for. What the uni is doing is the equivalent of gyms being shut but making us still pay and getting away with it by offering online gym classes to do from home. And that is a fairly good analogy. Well said, let's get back into the video. Before we dive into that any more, obviously I give my opinion and stuff, I'll, um, I asked that, I followed up with a question saying, what would you want to see added um, in response to this sort of what's going on? Gulliver of Travels, money back. Georgia Cape says, same support as students. Third year exams next week, then no library or extension. Yes, yeah, very true. Puvan Carr says, uni wasn't worth 9.25K before online learning anyway, but the degree was worth a bit more. Wants to see financial help or help to take over the tenancy if people can't live in their houses. Lectures to be released on Sunday or Monday for that week. Uni is so unorganized. And to wants recognition that the experience hasn't been the same and a partial refund. Registered, every uni needs the same no detriment policy. Unfair if some get better policy, policies than others. Yeah, I totally agree. This is one thing that really bugs me, obviously, because I got 69%. How can some unis have a no detriment policy and some not have it? It makes no sense that, that there's such a disparity between the different universities. And it's also like the gradings. Some unis round up, some give you a first, even if you get 67%, but get four out of six. Um, modules at first like why is there no why is there zero consistency i get there's no zero consistency amongst the learning and the teaching and the, the tests because everyone's different every teacher's different but surely there's got to be some sort of consistency in terms of policy it makes no sense to me anyway run over john box once covid is all sorted they need to reimburse students for this time 9k is unfair that's from an accountant um refund international students no detriment policy it's all very valid stuff and i think you know the consensus among students is very much the same i've i've, I've made videos before i've said it before like yeah we should, what the, why, why have we got a refund i don't know <laughs> now just to balance it out i thought of a few reasons what you know might lead us to not getting a refund and essentially it goes along the lines of you know the university is still having to rent out the buildings they're still employing the staff, the teachers. They've invested more in the portal and online servers. The admin cost to redistribute a refund will be super high. How do they determine who gets what? Every course is different value for money, so there's obviously that to consider. But then you could say, oh, why don't you just give us a blanket refund? And I guess some people will benefit more from a blanket refund than others. But then, and then their argument is probably that Without this, if they gave out a blanket refund to every millions of students in the UK, the university ecosystem would crumble. Lecturers and staff would lose their jobs. You know, it kind of creates this sort of economic downward spiral of collapse. And obviously the government can't just keep printing out loads and loads of money. I think they're already printing out so much. Who knows what's going to happen to the economy in a few years. And maybe arguments are that the, the money is better spent elsewhere from the government and that, you know, we don't have to pay any of this tuition fee loan yet because and they might say to me, because I took up this course in 2020 into first years, uh, you knew what you was getting yourself into, you, you kind of accepted the course, but I'd be like, oh, that's peak. Then they can say that all the value is in the final degree product and you, they can say that you're still getting the final degree. But that does infuriate me a bit because it just assumes that you're going to university purely for the degree, which I know firsthand is far, far from the truth. So that's the current point we're at with everything. and. Like, so it's a sticky one because we've, I've, got, I've now basically got a summer holiday on my hands, not going back till end of Feb, which is when the government say in-person teaching can commence at the earliest. And um, while I have no doubt that this is the last lockdown and the more people that get, you know, vaccinated and everything's getting sorted now, it still leaves the question of how, how can people stay motivated? How can people have good mental health without anything to open or to do or to see anybody? I mean, it's got to be a given that there's got to be some sort of no detriment policy or easier exams or relaxed time frames or exam conditions and stuff like that for every single university out there. Like in terms of a refund, do I think we're going to get a refund? Hell no. 
I, I don't think there's zero chance. But everybody my age has been talking about it. Um, luckily at my drama school where it's a small institution they have the capabilities to uh, increase the year by a few months and it won't affect anything whereas big universities they couldn't really affect the actual timings of stuff because it's a cycle and it's a year on year cycle but it is literally the case where you, you if you went to the open university you would uh, get the same thing like other than the quality of teaching and the uh, the sort of wow factor that comes with a, a proper university. I can't think of any difference from the open university to, to an actual university right now unless you're studying medicine. But of course, for every reason under the sun, university students probably should in any other consumer sector or there's gotta be, I always think there's gotta be some sort of consumer law, but that for any other product, if something or service, if something like this happened, there would be like a law where you get a refund. But for some reason with a university and stuff like that, there is literally no thing that says you should get a refund. I, I reckon there must be some sort of small print in the contract that when you sign it's like you uh, relieve or waive any right to get a refund um, due to any circumstances, which sucks. But yeah, overall guys, I have no clue what's gonna happen or what's going on or just... And speaking from my experience last year during exams during Corona, you really have to dig deep and just find that one tiny bit of motivation deep inside just to slog through every single exam that's coming up and to give it your best shot because the worst thing you want to do is not have the full experience and not get a good grade. And I know it's so hard to say, but I tried my best and still worked through it last year and it's tough, but it can be done. I've basically got two months off university now, but I will definitely try and ensure I do make the most of it. But yeah, alright guys, if you do want to support the channel, please do go and get a phone wallet. I'll link them down below. They basically stick on the back of your phone, you put your cards in. 99% cheaper than Apple's version um, at a pound each. And essentially as well, I've got some new music coming out soon. Please check that out. Here's the 2021. They said it couldn't get any worse than 2020. Well, I am. It's definitely started off just as bad. <laughs> but at least from this point onwards, it can't get any worse, right? Right? I don't touch wood. I ain't jinxing it. I ain't jinxing it. Now, just as a huge disclaimer, um, coronavirus is obviously such a worldwide disaster and I know that the, the issues raised in this video are relatively low down on the list of priorities and in the big scheme of things they're relatively low down. However, I still feel it's important to talk about them and once again I stress I am not blaming anybody. I totally know this is nobody's fault. So I'm on this car journey and something I can't stop thinking about is this experience I had in Domino's Pizza back in uh, 2019 in Sydney, Australia. So um, where I was staying at uni, there was a, a Domino's Pizza nearby and I used to be able to go and get $5 pizza. So one evening it was like cold, um, surprisingly cold for Australia. And I go into Domino's Pizza and, and get a five U AUD margarita, which is like three quid, 250. And there's a sign on the wall that says, you know, just by the counter once you enter on the right, it's a tiny Domino's Pizza. And it says, best milkshake of your life or money back. So it was a guarantee. It was a guarantee that the milkshake I was about to have was gonna be the best in my life or I essentially get my money back. Um, so obviously thinking it's a win-win situation, I got a, a milkshake and I had it. And um, you know, I came over the counter with my pizza, to my pizza, to my milkshake, had a sip. And it honestly was not the best milkshake of my life. It was good, but it's-, it's All up in my head, that's how I behave. Passing up the same, waking up the same All up in my head, that's just how I behave How I behave